Hello and welcome to What The Math, today we'll be talking about the laws of exponents. Now this will be a very short video because there are only a few laws you have to remember and unfortunately you have to remember them. Now the easiest way to remember the laws of exponents is by thinking about order of operations again, that's bad math or PAMDAS for some of you. And if, you re if we actually rewrite them right here on the side, so we have brackets first, exponents next, then we have multiplication and division. And then we have addition and subtraction. Now, okay, so we have our order of operations right here. So now let's look at the laws of exponents. So first law is pretty simple. All right, so let's look at the first law. And the law is pretty simple. So imagine you have a number, A, that has an exponent, N. And it's multiplied by another number or by the same number, A, that has an exponent, M. So what happens to these exponents? Well, it's a multiplication right here. So if you look at your uh, order of operation, what happens is it actually goes down a level. And so what you get is you get A of, and since so this is actually multiplication, it's, only, it's going to become addition. So it's going to be A and plus M. So it goes down a level and becomes uh, addition from multiplication. Now imagine there's another number b that has an exponent m but this time it's actually divided by a number b that has an exponent m in other words this is this is what we have bn divided by bm what do you think happens then so you have division and it becomes subtraction so you'll get b of n minus m in other words let's just do a quick example here if you have two square multiply 2 square, multiply by 2 to the power of 3, you will have 2 to the power of 2 plus 3, or 2 to the power of 5. And if you have 2 to the power of uh, the 2 squared uh, divided by 2 cubed, you will have 2 to minus 3, which is 2 to the power of minus 1. And we'll talk about this in a second, but basically this is what the answer is. Next, law number 3, and that's uh, if you have brackets. So imagine you have a to the power of n, but it's actually inside the brackets, and there's m power uh, on the outside. So what happens then? What happens when you have brackets? And with brackets, basically, you kind of jump down as well, but in this case, you jump down to right here to multiplication. It's a little bit more complicated, but basically, this will become a to the power of n multiplied by m. So let's do a quick example here. Uh, 2 squared, and in brackets, you have power of 3. So 2 squared, and then to the third power, what you, will you have? You will have 2 to the power of 2 times 3, or in other words, you will have 2 to the power of 6. So with brackets, you kind of skip a level right uh, right in the middle, you skip the exponent level, and you go down to multiplication. Now, rule number 4 is a little bit tricky because there's really no mnemonic for trying to remember this, but basically, when you have brackets and you have two numbers inside those brackets, so let's just say a times b, this is a times b, and on the outside you have a power n. Well, in that case, you have to take this power, let's circle it, take this power, and you have to basically put it into every term. You have to open the brackets and distribute the powers of every term, so this will become a n times b n. Now, once you remember this, rule number five is pretty simple. I'm gonna make it green again, so a divided by b to the power of n. Guess what happens here? Well, you take the n and you distribute it again to every term and it becomes a n divided by b n. And so this is kind of simple, but you just have to remember it. Now, one side note I do have for you is that remember that in these parts right here and also right here, your b cannot be zero. So this has to be anything but zero because you cannot divide by zero. So this is not zero. And this is also not zero because if it's zero, it doesn't work. Now, these are the main five rules of, uh, or laws of exponents, but also there's a few other side rules. And let's look at these as well. 
And because there are side rules, I'm going to put them right here on the side. So let's start with number one. And side rule number one is that whenever you have anything to the power of zero except for zero, if it's any other number except for zero, you will always have one. So A cannot be zero. A is not zero. And if it's not zero and it's to the power of zero, then you always have one. Rule number two is that Whenever you have a negative power, so just like here, we had a negative power, uh, what you get is you get a fraction of 1 over a to that power, but now it's positive. So basically, when you lose the negative in the power right here, it turns this into an inverse. Basically, it's 1 divided by number to the positive power. So this 2 minus 1 will, of course, become... 1 over 2 to the power of 1, which is essentially 1 over 2 or 1 half. Now, likewise, whenever you have something like this, 1 over a to the power of minus 1, because there's a minus here, you can now make an inverse of this, and so it will actually become a to the power of n. So this becomes positive, and you lose the inverse and it becomes a regular number. And lastly, side rule number three is whenever you have any kind of a fraction in your power, so for example, this is a to the power of one, two, what happens is you actually create a root. So this will become a square root of a. If you have a to the power of one third, this will create a cubic root of a, and so on and so forth. Let's come up with something a little bit crazier so you get the, an idea here. So let's say it's an a to the power of 5 over 6, so this will actually create a 6th power root, so it's, it will be a root of uh, 6, and uh, inside you'll have a, but it will actually be to the power of 5, so uh, essentially, whatever is in the denominator goes into your root right here, and whatever is in the denominator goes into your number right here. So this is a very important rule because this will help you simplify a lot of different exponents uh, later on. All right, so that's it for laws of exponents. Hopefully this was clear and thank you and good luck to you. Bye-bye.